Um, and I'd like to thank in particular um, our um, Francis, our secretary, uh, for his support and able to have this meeting here this morning and this team. I'd especially like to thank Anne Scripps for uh, traveling such a long distance. And uh, I'd like all the way from Cork, <laughs> if you don't mind, uh, to be with us today. Now, first of all, we have um, we will have um, the conservation plan done by Duncan McLaren, and then we will have a talk by Shearsha O'Doherty, uh, entitled "Within and Without the Walls of the Keep." I hope you enjoyed the little short um, program that we have for you, and thank you very much again for coming. Oh, and by the way, just one thing before you go. We have an open day here uh, uh, on the 7th of June for O'Darty's Keep. It's a golf tournament we're running. Um, now, it'll be running that week for gentlemen, if any of you want to come play. And uh, just to let you know that the club will be open to you all today to golf. Okay, thank you. So really I'm just going to talk about the conservation plan, but as to, to explain where we are in terms of looking at adopting scheme and uh, the project that we're discussing uh, as to whether it can be undertaken here or not. Um, so what is the project um, is kind of the question. And um, when we first met the National Monument Service, what we agreed that we would do at the very outset was to look at the, uh, the keep building itself as an archaeological monument uh, and to try and determine what this building can actually accommodate. Because at the moment, in some ways, you can say, well, the building is, doesn't need saving, it's safe, uh, it's being looked after, the Office of Public Works uh, carry out a, a maintenance program on it. So. What we're looking to achieve now is uh, something more than just saving the building. And uh, I think one of the key things is, is the idea about uh, making the building accessible to people so we can actually go in and experience something, uh, whether it's the building itself, and then there are there is then the whole issue of um, the interpretation, the, the visitor experience of this building, uh, which is Anne's role, and uh, I suppose at this stage, this is a bit, we're at a stage now where having completed the conservation plan, looking at what some of the constraints might be, we're now entering the next phase, which is looking at the feasibility of using the building in some way and considering what the visitor experience will be. So um, I'm going to talk to you about the building itself. So a conservation plan is basically something which is uh, established by international charter, uh, the format of this is something which is uh, is understood by conservation professionals the world over, and is, is a means by which we can communicate with the National Monument Service, and they can see that we're taking a a, 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 a good professional and um, consistent. Uh, view on, on, on issues that relate to the building. So the site, I suppose, comprises a building. It's also a setting. Um, the location, obviously, people are familiar with, which is uh, in Dukhrana. Um, but it's also, there's a wider context, um, which is not just the physical landscape, but it's also a series of other uh, buildings uh, around in the show, which were connected, uh, owned by, had relationships with the Iraqi clan and others over the years. So there's complicated history, but these, these markers here show some of the other uh, important sites that, that um, are related with, uh, with the site of Bukhara. This is the uh, 17th century map, uh, Hollow Parsons, or Parsons Hollow map, uh, the, which was basically recorded the lands uh, that um, <coughs> the uh, uh, Chichester uh, basically took possession of uh, at the at the end of or beginning of the 17th century, um, and uh, this forms a valuable record of Inishona at, at a particular moment in time. 
So I'm just going to show some of the other castles uh, that, that are connected with the, the keep. Uh, this is uh, Karakabrathi Castle, which is uh, taken from uh, the top of Five Finger Strand. So it, it shows the, the setting as uh, quite windswept and uh, uh, exposed. Um, the Black Inch Castle, which is um, the bottom, the south end of Inch Island, and uh, I'm not sure it probably can be approached from farmland, but I think generally people get can get to it along the shoreline, which again is quite hazardous because you've got uh, basically the risk of the tide coming in and cutting you off. Um, we've got Burke Castle, which is um, was a state of the art fortress um, with. Um, artillery uh, defences that was built um, towards the end of the uh, um, 16th century using the, the latest technology um, and there, there are connections obviously th this is a, a, another a lovely um, fortress but, it, but it, it was this was fortified by Hugh Boy who uh, a lovely or also known as um, Devitt um, and uh, he was also responsible for one of the phases of development in, in a Dogby's Keep. Um, that's the setting for Burt, which is on a hilltop and panoramic uh, views of the landscape, and in particular Lock Swilly, which would have been the, the main anchorage. Uh, so uh, uh, this is uh, Elick uh, Moor Castle, um, which Again, there's a, in, a, what you see now is it, it looks quite modest, but it, 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 uh, uh, during the uh, 15th, 16th centuries, this was this was a pretty big and important building. So there were archaeological digs done here in the last um, within the last five years, I think, and they've been able to uh, demonstrate the the accuracy of some of the historical mapping, which is evidence of the importance of this site. Um, it's Cold War, um, again, quite a modest structure, but um, actually formed part of a much wider military setting. So that this was, um, when you look at the maps that were um, drawn in the 17th century, this, this area was re-fortified with artillery defences as well as uh, the older um, castle in the middle of the setting. So quite picturesque um, in the, I think that's the late 19th century photograph, early 20th century. Um, it's probably less picturesque now, but still an important site. And then you have um, the the castle um, in Derry. Is there a red printer here? Oops. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll um, so the <coughs> the uh, the Tower Museum in Derry is obviously a modern building. It's not a, a historic building, but the reason why it looks like it does, and the reason why it was located where it is, is because uh, it was um, a medieval um, fortification that was on the site uh, prior to the the establishment of, of the city. So it's predated the, the plantation. That's uh, very, and then we've got other castles. Um, this this is that's the green castle. This is Norman Castle. So 14th century, um, a, a very large and significant structure, um, somewhat dilapidated now. But this is on the same sort of scale as Carrick Fergus Castle, um, which I don't know if anybody's familiar with. But this, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very large structure. Um, so it, 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 there was a, the, an adopted tower house built into the, the side of um, this. Uh, I, I think uh, other associations, uh, I think this is often referred to as an O'Donnell Castle as well because of the associations with the O'Donnells. And uh, I think the Blocklands as well take uh, interest in this. So um, the, the the, the, uh, the, the kind of sense of ownership of this is quite quite uh, dispersed. I think you know it's it, it's applicable uh, to a wide number of families. So the location of 
Dean Keep, which I think everybody here is probably familiar with. Um, this is the, uh, the map which sets out the area which is under the protection of the, uh, the, uh, the Office of Public Works. Uh, and yeah, it does say 50 foot square, so <laughs> yeah, that's a good, not a soft square. <laughs> Um, so th th there is a, a notion, there's no defined boundary, but there, there is a, a 50 foot square in the middle of it, uh, which, which defines the area which is technically under state protection. Um, setting which we're all familiar with. So I, I'm not going to spend too much time going, there's, there's quite a few pictures here, so I know we've just been here, so a lot of this is all very familiar. Um, I suppose some of the the photographs they show um, when you start to look at the building and lighting conditions are very important but when you start to look at the building you can actually see quite a few changes in the surface of the, the building materials um, and I suppose one of the interests uh, I, I suppose what's interesting about the building what characterizes this building isn't necessarily uh, its architectural detail as such there aren't carvings here or uh, even particularly well dressed stones. I think it's a piece of masonry work. Um, th that's not where its interest lies. But I think th there are quite a, a few changes. And so it's how the, the building has evolved over time is, is one of its main points of interest. So you know, what we're looking at here, okay, it's quite a fuzzy photograph, but you can see that th this, this area here is where the front door was originally so i think anybody that came in one of the things we just we pointed out was where the front door was uh even though it doesn't look like a front door uh, anymore um you can see that there were uh, uh gun loops that defended the doorway there's a murder hole over the doorway this all gives the as clues as to the age of the building the type of defenses they were using obviously they had um that they had muskets and pistols, so you know, you're looking at something in the, um, in the 16th century probably. Um, the, uh, the murder hole is a bit more primitive than, than earlier, but uh, again, it, 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 this is very much uh, like any tower house you see throughout Ireland. You know, the design of the building is, is essentially um, a tower house. Uh, design which would, had evolved really from the, the Anglo Normans onwards. And when it gets to uh, Inner Schoen, you have um, a very, it has its own particular character and scale. Um, so prior to um, the uh, plantation, uh, you had a whole lot of mapping going on, a whole lot of interest in. Uh, Gaelic, the remaining Gaelic feudal lands. Uh, this is one map of the data there is around about well, 1600 <coughs> and shows the significant structure. So, um, not un unlike the, the ones on our contemporary map, you can see that they've highlighted what they consider to be the important structures at the time, uh, some of which have completely disappeared. Uh, but, but generally, they're, 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 they're still recognisable. Pointers in the middle of the device, but then have to the pointer yes. yes. on the surface. Oh. Uh, no. Oh, 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 yes. Yeah. It's not just. Um, so, this uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a map uh, which was uh, yeah, Ashby. Uh, so that's 1601, which is a record basically of the, uh, the English takeover of, uh, of, uh, of Derry in particular, but the, 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 the whole region around it. And uh, it's what Brian Lacey uh, refers to as the, the, the trip up the Amazon. So the boil was this. this uh, um, even to the unknown exploration. Uh, also, 1602, 1603, we've got a map of Inishown, 
uh, and from kind of the on it. So even though I suppose we've assessed this building from a kind of military strategic point of view as not being um, particularly important in that sense, it, it's a very significant structure uh, and uh, it's a defensible structure even though it, it, um, it doesn't have the set, it, it, it's not an artillery emplacement, it's not somewhere where um, you can defend the lock, it's still of itself a defensible place. Um, we have the down survey mapping, uh, which is six, around mid 17th century, um, showing the castle. And then this is a detail of the Parsons Hollow map, um, which interestingly is dated mid 17th century, but social tells me that uh, the, 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 this is a, a copy of an earlier map, so some of the, uh, the detail of this would suggest that even though the date of the map, of the map is later, you can see the town of Bunkrana, uh, this is the north of the castle, or is, is being shown at that time. Doctor, the thing that dates it is the uh, inclusion of Derry as part of Inishall. On that map, right? Because in 1610, it was cut out. It's cut out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and then we've got this is the Thomas Phillips map, which is um, I think it's quite a, a late map, but it's about, about 1680. Um, again, it's showing a town associated with the keep. So then there's a whole settlement there. So we're potentially we're not just talking about a building, but there's a much wider complex of buildings and uh, historical setting. Uh, and then in the, the end of the 18th century, we've got the modern castle. Um, the keep is not really visible on this map, but it, and we see the town of Krana has moved to the, uh, to the other side of the river, um, where it now currently lies. So, um, 19th century mapping, um, we've got the castle still forming part of the setting of, a, of a, the mainland associated with, um, confusingly, Bunkrana Castle, which is a big house, I suppose we call it that, and um, set off to one side of, of an axial driveway. So it's not, even though it's still there as a, an eye catcher perhaps, or it has some other function other than than a, than as a residence, uh, possibly as a as a jail, uh, and there's some evidence to suggest that Wolf Tone was incarcerated here for overnight when he was uh, in 1798. So um, part of the conservation plan is really to understand the significance of the place and of the building. So um, conservation plan does talk about the significance of, of that, uh, both in terms of its historical setting. But also, um, this, this map is a um, special area of conservation, so it has a natural heritage significance as well, which also ties in with the, the, the fishing resource. Um, in the 19th century, you had Captain Sir William Smith, whose role was to uh, set out some of the uh, Napoleonic era defences, um, very interested in of a uh, historical defense, defenses around Kinnishine and around Don Donegal uh, and made records of all of these places including Bunkrana and uh, it's interesting here is you, you have uh, a border wall with very much stylistically some battlements that are, that are um, 17th century in their nature. Now this wall is, the, the lower part of the wall is still there, but the top part of the wall is gone, and it's almost unrecognizable. It's only recently been re-exposed, uh, it was covered in ivy up until early this year. Uh, we can see a sort of sally port doorway coming through, uh, which is still, one part of that is still there, and you can see the, 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 the modern big house behind. Um, so where does that fit into other plantation period structures we've got? It? Again, I don't, this is quite a poor picture, but the, the Bourne Wall, this is uh, um, uh, Castle Ray or Folka House in um, uh, it's near to Valley in Falcara, that, that area. Um, 
this crenellation on the top of the wall is typical of, of the 17th century. Um, other tower houses that are similar in location, this is narrow water, um, and you've got uh, a kind of 17th century style crenellated parapet. Uh, also the location next to um, an important fishing place, uh, as well as um, having some defensive uh, value. Uh, and then in the 19th century, you've got the castle forming a, uh, starting to form a kind of touristic function, something which is uh, uh, something to, to, to muse upon. And then we've got the photography in the 19th century, um, William Lawrence, uh, with Lawrence Studio spent um, a great deal of time photographing places that would be of interest to people, local people, but also to tourists. And this, these were the uh, uh, that people could take away with them when they came to visit the crowd. Um, but they're also an extremely valuable resource to us now. Um, a lot of these are digitized and can be um, viewed online. Uh, and that's, this is a, a section of the same photograph which is blown up, they're very, very high resolution. So we can actually actually start to see the stones and the walls of the castle and elements of the roof. So there's quite a lot of evidence that, that it's here and quite easily, um, easily uh, found. Um, also, uh, one of the other uh, issues when trying to establish the significance of the place is also to try and interpret the site uh, in terms of where the where its limits uh, might be. This purple line is is by no means um, an accurate depiction of the Bourne Wall, but it is based on mapping evidence, a suggestion of where the, the Bourne Wall may have been. Um, and when you start to look at the masonry structures around the site, you can see there's a kind of defensive. Um, tower in the corner which predates the bridge um, and if we think of that that probably established the, the southwest southeastern um, location of the bomb uh, before the, uh, the big house was constructed. So this is a kind of level of detail that we can find just from the historical photography. We also have um, it's very like character bracket in some ways. We also have uh, Harry Swan's survey um, mm. drawings where, um, uh, I don't know if everybody knows who Harry Swan was, but basically he's an amateur archaeologist and, and spent time going around the whole of uh, in show and recording its features of interest and particularly interested in uh, castle buildings. Um, and they carried out a survey of Bukrana um, I don't know exactly, I think this was the 1920s, but the, this is predates recent uh, conservation work. So there's actually a lot of information here about the castle that, that no longer exists, but, we could, but it's actually useful to us in terms of what we might do in the future. Um, some of the red scribbles are, are my own in terms of just what we observed on the site. Um, and we also supplemented some of those drawings uh, for the purposes of the, the report. Uh, one of the things that we have been able to do with this process, um, there, there are laser scans that have been done by an archaeological team um, who were able to produce very detailed and accurate three-dimensional models of this building. Um, so that, that will be extremely useful to us in the next phase, which is to start to look at how we might put floors in the, the building or a uh, roof back onto it. So the, the, um, what the conservation plan does then, it starts to look at the, the, thing, the, the issues that we're going to, we, we may need to address if we decide that the way to go here is to put a roof onto the building to reoccupy it in some way. Uh, there are very practical things like how people come in and out. Um, how do you like the building? Um, how do you make it safe? That there will have to be a fire safety certificate. 
so we had to have emergency lighting and alarm systems. All of these things have the potential to really alter <coughs> and, and spoil the building in, in, in lots of ways, or, or change the experience <coughs> of the building. Whereas if they're properly considered and discussed and thought through uh, from the very outset, um, the agreeing a, a, an approach is, is, is um, avoids us going too far in developing a, a proposal which then um, fails because there are some fundamental uh, issues to do with the archaeology that haven't really been properly thought through. Um, so we, we've, we've kind of looked at that each part of the building in turn and really um, so this is the, the loom that everybody who came in wasn't able to see but um, which was uh, one of the points of interest um, so I'm running out of time so I'm going to just get through these pictures this is an example of the, uh, some of the artifacts that were found under the floor um, in the keep, um, there's some pretty horrific looking axes and maces there. Uh, we don't actually know where this material is. Um, it may be in the National Museum. It may be in Bunker. We don't know. When was it found? Uh, Harry's. I think Harry Swan dug them up. Harry Swan. So that was that was um, <coughs> 1930s, perhaps. I'm not, not, oh, I'm not okay. sure, but um, uh, Swan was doing stuff and writing for about 40, 50 years, so it could, could be any time in the 20th century. Um, so these are just some of the issues. So, uh, and the things, these aren't the things you would automatically immediately think about, but these are the things that have the power to make or break how, whether, how you use the building, but just how you deal with services, so electricity, do you put electricity in the building? Um, there probably is an effort, but does it need to be mains power, can be battery power? Um, fuel economy, there's a whole issue of just generating any project. Um, how you deal with environmental issues. Um, there's emergency <coughs> fire safety, access for people with disabilities. Um, we're not going to put a lift in the building, I don't, I don't think, but um, do we make it easier for people to get in the road? <coughs> yes, we probably do. So, is that a case of, is that an argument for putting in another staircase into the building, uh, as well as the stone staircase? Um, the, the whole issue about the other uh, the future development and settings, so the whole thing about um, catering and toilets and all of that, which do need to be brought into the development program. Um, do they need to happen within the keep or on the site or somewhere else? Um, I think financially they're, they're necessary because they generate income for the, for the to run the project. Which, um, we also have um, the uh, that whole issue of archaeology. It is a very heavily protected building, so everything we do has that, that has to be our primary one of our primary concerns. Um, and then we also have the issue of artifacts and history of the site, anything we do, um, we start to, to create records. The laser scanning, for example, is, will be a very important historical document that records the building at a certain moment in time. So we have to think about what, what we do with all of that information and look after it to make it accessible over time. So then we have a series of actions. So in the short term, basically, is the next step, which is the, uh, the feasibility study, and um, the, uh, the these are some of the issues which I'm not going to go through, but um, in, in detail. Let's leave that. Um, and then some of the, the issues that we have to once we've decided exactly what it is we're doing, so the medium term exercise in terms of process in undertaking the development in its own right becomes uh, every, even this thing the building at the moment requires a health and safety method statement. So if you can imagine the next step that involves uh, potentially some development or alteration of the building, every single step of that process is going to have to be designed before we do it, recorded, 
and monitored. You know, and uh, it's what we do. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of where we are now. And um, thanks for listening. And uh, I'm going to use the half an hour.